Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's class. Uh, my name is Andy, and I'm going to go through a uh, consumer persona with you guys. I uh, will be sharing how to put together a consumer persona, the importance of the consumer persona when you're applying it. And um, at the end of the session, we're going to answer some questions. So if you have questions, note it down, and then we will uh, address them uh, at the end. All right. So Today, consumer persona, this is really the million dollar question, isn't it? So let's look at the contents. So what is a persona? And then part two, we'll look at the persona and the consumer journey or an experience journey. What does a persona do and how to do a good persona? So I'm going to be using a, a bunch of theory and I'm going to be using a bunch of uh, my examples that I've uh, come up come across as I developed, uh, worked on my own brand. So my background is in digital marketing and we use consumer personas all the time to help clients with identifying who their audience is so that we can create the appropriate communication messages. So this year I've also uh, started working on a brand of my own and founded a company. And uh, through the persona, I was able to help use this persona to help uh, lead product creation as well. So in my previous role, uh, we were mostly on the communication side. Then when we moved into starting a business, started seeing how important it was to the product development as well, not just the communication. So this company that I've created uh, with a bunch of others, uh, one of the co-founders, is a duvet company called Rest Duvet. And Rest Duvet company is designed and created by duvet experts. I will work with some of the uh, one of the biggest manufacturers of duvets um, and we co-created this brand and our positioning is that we wanted to create rest for preoccupied minds that are sleep deprived and we want to recharge and provide comfort to our consumers so that they can be the best version of themselves so when we did the research when we did the research on the category, the competition, the trends, we saw that a lot of people around the world, because of the pandemic right now, have a lot on their minds. Uh, the, there is a big blur in between working at home and going to sleep at night. So people are having a tough time to kind of cut things off, to not let their work creep into their sleep and their relaxation time, which is very critical for people to get proper sleep. So we wanted to come in here and play a role in helping people get better sleep. And when we looked at the category, and we looked at the consumers, we found that uh, people really sleep differently. And in order for them to get really high quality sleep, it's crucial that they choose a duvet that is right for their sleeping needs. But when we looked at the category, we saw that not a lot of people, not a lot of brands, not a lot of companies were helping consumers find the right duvet for them. There was a lot of communication that was pushed down to them. It, they were telling them how uh, how much fill power a duvet had, what, how high the thread count of the duvet was. But it didn't really tell the consumer what was the implication of that, nor did they ask the consumers uh, what kind of sleeping environments do they have? What kind of sleeper they are? Because, for example, if you are a hot sleeper, you're going to need a different type of duvet than someone that sleeps very cold. Or if you live in a very hot environment, you're going to need a different uh, duvet compared to someone that sleeps in a very cold environment. So there's a lot of factors that come to play when choosing a duvet. And we feel like the uh, there's a knowledge gap that could be filled and we would be as a duvet expert help the consumers uh, purchase a duvet so this is uh, something that we went through through our research and some of the thing that we concluded on so today i'm going to help you guys go through and try to identify who your consumer persona is and help you try to identify some key anxieties key pain points that they have um, that allows them to um, fix a problem and us allows the brand to solve a need. So 
let's go back very fundamentally and discuss what is a persona. So like I said earlier, we did uh, cultural research, category research, com competition research, and I hope you guys have already done that. So today we're going to focus on this uh, fourth block of four C's, which is the consumer. And here we're going to look at what their anxieties, their aspirations, and how can you answer that they didn't know what they needed. So we're going to try to uh, really understand this consumer and really get deep dive into their aspirations and their anxieties, a little bit more of the psychological uh, factors that make them choose what they choose, right? So traditionally, uh, we look at a TA and, or a target audience, and really your target audience is not everyone, but it's a very specific group of consumers, most likely that want your product or service. Unless you are a brand like maybe Coca-Cola, or uh, Nike or something where you have a very, very, very broad reach and you've been around forever and your consumer can be a very broad group. But even then, you know, their, their TA, their target audience isn't everyone. It's a specific group of people. And as a new business, um, as entrepreneurs, when you're starting out, you need to be very clear on who your consumers are because you really want to create products that addresses that group's needs. And also you gotta be very specific so that you understand the communication that you're going to use. And when it comes to communication, you have a limited budget. You have a, you can't, uh, you're not gonna have millions and millions and millions of dollars to spend on marketing. So when you spend your marketing dollars, you gotta be very sharp. You, know, you gotta be very targeted to a specific set of consumers, right? So how are we gonna identify, figure out who these consumers are and how we're gonna to talk to them? So let's say, say you already have a broad target, working millennials, but who are they? Where to find them? How to reach them? And say you already have some labels for them. So you have basic uh, demographics, like they're between 25 and 35, they're female, they earn about 50K a year, they're product manager, a yogi, love coffee, but do you know them as a person so you can make yourself relevant to them? Can you talk to them in a way that will grab their attention and make them like care about you? Right, if you just say, my audience is a female, 25, 35 years old, there are a lot of different females between 25 to 35 years old with different personalities, different ones, different needs, different aspirations. So in order for you to really talk to them, you got to begin to understand those aspirations, those anxieties, those values, those goals of life, so that you can really resonate with them. And we see this a lot nowadays with DTC brands. They're very niche and when they first start out, they are very clear on who their target audience is and their communication is very sharp to pinpoint the exact needs that those consumers have and really bring those to the surface so that they can capture that audience's attention. So one way that we uh, go about this and get to really understand who our consumers are is by developing a persona. And a persona is a semi-fictional representation of your ideal customer who you will build the brand for, right? It's a semi-fictional representation. So this person is semi-fictional. So they're not precisely real, but the creation of this person is based on real research, based on real interviews, real surveys, real research. And you're gonna create the semi-fictional person based on that. So just to be clear, there's a target audience and there is a persona. So we talk a lot about target audience and you probably know what a target audience is. They are people who most likely buy your products or services and they're united by some common characteristics. When we talk about target audience, we focus more on demographics, behavior such as where a group lives, their occupation, the age range, and some buying behaviors, right? But when we get into the consumer persona or buyer persona, 
we look at it as a semi-fictional representation of your ideal customer based on market research and real data about your customers. So we're looking at a lot more information here. We're focused on, on exploring the values, needs, motives, and decision-making methods of the target users. So the, for the target audience, it could be a group of people. For the persona, we're going to start to give them a name. We're going to say, hey, this is Nancy. She is exactly 35 years old. She is a yoga instructor for the past years. She loves health and wellness. She has one kid. She works at um, a uh, as a product manager at a large firm. She makes hundred thousand a year. Her anxieties are this, this, and that. Right. So we're going to talk about this. Um, but this is to. Uh, I wanted to just clear up the difference between a target audience and a persona. Okay. So. Let's go on and start to build a persona. So we created a persona template for you uh, to use. And this template will allow you to walk through the questions that you should be asking and kind of the research that you should be uh, doing and, and the results of that research you should be getting. So let's look at this. Um, and this is kind of this is the persona template. So first on the top left here, we're going to include a very basic information. So this is the information you would probably get from your uh, TA as a TA research. So things like basic demographic data, like age, gender, type of employment, household income, level of education, and other specific uh, background data. And remember, we don't want to use age range. We want to give it specific um, age. We want to give it a specific salary or income level. We want to give a specific uh, uh, number of kids. So there's no ranges. This is like an actual person, OK? And then we start to look at um, their some information like aspiration and goals, what this persona wants to achieve, their anxiety. What is this persona worried about? Their interests and hobbies. So. What are their relevant interests, their hobbies, their leisure activities? What are the things that they like to do? Because your life, a person, is more than just someone that works, someone that uh, you know has kids. They also have other interests. They have hobbies. They have leisure activities. And these leisure activities are kind of re representative of who that person is and what kind of things that they like and what kind of values that they have. Next one is values, so their core beliefs. And these core beliefs guides their attitudes and behaviors. Then we have core needs. What are their needs in your sector? What triggers or influences their purchase? Pain points, issues, unmet needs, challenges. What's the role of the category? What are their attitude, behaviors, and products in the relevant themes and categories? sectors. And then what are the rules of engagement? So and you can kind of use this template sentence. If this product has X feature that does this, and it makes me feel like this. OK, so this is a very quick overview. I'm going to go through each of these and uh, talk about it a little more in depth. So the first four uh, boxes on the top right is know this person, uh, know him or her as a person. And then the four on the bottom is the role of the category uh, as it relates to this person. OK. So we went through this already. And then so for Res, uh, when we looked at Res Duvet as a case study, after interviewing 40 uh, Duvet users, we found an emotional connection between the Duvet and the users. And we finally determined that our consumer persona was working moms and busy women. So when I talked about earlier about we wanted to help people get sleep, we want to help get people to get the rest they need because they have these preoccupied minds, their days are blurred because of working from home or COVID restriction, kids not going to school, et cetera, et cetera. We realized that moms and busy women 
were having the most difficulty out of all the groups um, that were sleep deprived, that were preoccupied minds. Because mom general, moms and busy women generally have a bigger share of the household duties. So they are essentially balancing a very tough working life and they are also balancing a very busy home life. So in the past, kids were off at school and the moms could balance their their work and things like that. But with uh, the pandemic around, kids all of a sudden couldn't go to school. They were studying at home. They were going to school at home. And moms essentially had to be there at home with them to take care of them. So they were doing work and then also taking care of the kids at the same time. So this became a very important piece that we realized that the moms were one of the target audiences that were most in need of, of getting that quality sleep so that it can feel recharged and refreshed the next day. So we have a quote here, and you can see, when I get home, my kids just have woken up and they're ready for the day, but I'm not exactly ready for their day. So this is a quote from a nurse that you know works um, late shifts and then when she comes home in the morning their kids are awake but she just finishing a shift but she has to find a way to balance the kids being awake and all energetic and for her to get some rest get some sleep so that she can get recharged and moms here also we found that they especially need rest because there's a big fear the big fear is that if they don't sleep they're going to get tired and they're going to get sick and if they get sick they're unable take care of their kids. So that fear is very high on their minds. And so sleep becomes a very important uh, piece for them. All right, so here are some examples of goals and aspirations. And these are more generic. Um, you can look at them and try to maybe apply them to your businesses. This one, these ones don't specifically apply to our rest case, our rest duvet, but it could be applying to your company. So some examples is find my tribe. I can be myself among others who share some values and passion with me, right? Goal, another goal is freedom. I wanna be independent, no constraints, and get company lost, wondering, organic, spontaneous experiences. Another example is tranquility, moments of me time, complete peace of mind, sense of lightness, this one likely is going to be uh, one of the goals that are resonated, uh, that are baked into our brand. We want to provide that moment of me time for the moms. Another example of goals aspiration is money success, financial independence as an enabler for freedom, or having a leisure lifestyle, no worries, no burdens, to have financial freedom, creating my own world and inviting people in it. And then maximization, you only live once. Kind of uh, the whole idea of FOMO, right? Fear of missing out or uh, kind of you only live once to do what you have to do because you only are on this planet once. So you want to do everything that you can. You want to maximize all the time you have. So these are some of the examples of goals and aspirations. So when it relates to us, uh, some of the goals and aspirations of moms are projects a picture of perfect social image balanced family and career set an example for their children not only a mother but an employee as a wife and a self helping in having some me time and enjoying some self-care right they looking for some me time at the end of the day when they're everything has settled down they're looking for me time all their day is about caring for others or, or being busy at work. It's really, uh, there's no real time for themselves. Okay. Some examples of fears and tensions. Loses control over my say and my do. What others think of me negatively. Guilty about not fulfilling my social duties. In incapability of financial or physical. The societal pressure for men especially money and success, fears of being average or unnoticed. There's a ton of fears out there. These are just some 
examples. I'm sure you can think of a lot of fears and tensions. And fears and tensions can be very, uh, very important for you to identify on your consumers because fears and tensions from what we understand, what we see is a real big driver for people to uh, be uh, very interested in your content, where it's a big driver for people to really focus in on your content. Right? Okay, so for us, the fears and tension is fears of losing career performance, fears of getting sick and getting old and losing control of life during the rush life, family, and career. So here are the fear of losing career performance. Working moms have a challenge because they are trying to balance their career and their home life. And if they are uh, focusing all their times on their home life, then they feel like a lot of the time that they have spent uh, building up their career is may go to waste or may get delayed and they may not get that next promotion or they may not get that uh, that next financial uh, that financial independence that they want for the future and then the fear of getting sick getting old and losing control of life during the rush life family and career so this fear of getting sick fear of getting old fear of losing control of life this is a, a really big fear because at this, uh, our, our TA, our, our, our consumer here, Nancy, she is really fearful of getting sick. And it's because fear of getting sick means she can't work, means that she cannot take care of her kids. And this is a very crucial fear. And sleep plays a huge role in helping you get not get sick. Because we all know that if we run a few days without sleep, our immune system gets compromised and we're a lot more likely to get sick. So this is a very important fear of the consumers. But let's look at some values, equity, uh, equality, respect, kindness, acceptance of others and differences, success and wealth, health as an enabler of freedom, adventure, but with some danger, ensure safe exploration, security, stable income, settled home life. So for us, our values is doing the best. I'm capable of at work and at home and being the best mom possible, even if I if it requires sacrifice. Yeah. So even uh, being the best mom possible, even if it requires a lot of sacrifice. So she will do all that she can to be the best mom possible. And time is something, and her herself is something that she would sacrifice to do to be the best mom possible. And when she, her value of doing the best, I'm capable of that work and at home is she wants to be the best that she can both at work and at home because this is a value that she holds dearly and that she wants to uh, continue and showcase to her kid in the future growing up. She shows that she can do this, that she can be the, doing the best she can at work and at home, prove it to herself as well. Okay, and then um, we're going to talk then now about the category side and look about core needs. So here we're going to be a little bit more specific and I'm going to use some examples from the beauty industry as an example. So antioxidation to maintain skin health, prevents visible skin issues, quick repair when issues surface, and youthfulness. Lock in current youthful beauty, prevent early signs of aging, revert to youthful beauty, defy aging. So these are some of the core needs that consumers are looking towards the category to help them solve. And so for us, the core needs are comfortable, the duvet has to be soft, it has to be fluffy, and it has to be good weight. It has to be very clean, right? It has to be have anti mite, for example, antibacterial. It has to be washable. The cleanness, cleanliness of a duvet is very important. And then the warmth, the temperature regulation. We all experience, or a lot of us have experienced when we sleep under a blanket or a duvet, 
that just is way too hot and we end up sweating in the middle of the night. And because we're so hot and so uncomfortable, we don't get that uninterrupted sleep. We, we don't get that sleep that we really need that is very uh, consistent and uninterrupted so that we have very good quality of sleep. Like you can lie in bed all night, but if you're not sleeping well and it's not comfortable sleep, then it's not as good. I'd rather have seven hours of uninterrupted high quality sleep than nine hours of sleep where I'm rolling around. So temperature regulation plays an important role in this because when we talk to the consumer, what are the, one of the biggest pain points that they have is that they need, they, they don't want to sweat and they want to be very comfortable and not overheat when they're sleeping. So it leads to some pain points. So take beauty, for example, again, rest and exercise. It boosts metabolism, energize and recharge the body and healthy diet, balance nutrition nutrients, avoid nasties, and indulgent eating. So require high self-discipline and time that most lack, right? Rest and exercise. The pain point here is that it requires a lot of self-discipline and a lot of time that most people lack, right? Because you got to boost your metabolism, energize, recharge the body, and have a healthy diet. So you have to balance nutrients, avoid nasties, indulgent eating like high food, fried food, sugary food, salty, spicy, all of these things. And it's actually very hard to do. And this is a pain point. It's a pain point for a lot of consumers. So when you're trying to stay healthy, stay fit and active, it requires a lot of self-discipline and time that most people lack. So an example of this is like uh, for for any of us, when we're stressed, when we have busy deadlines, when we are trying to get things done, right? And we don't have that time and we don't have that self-discipline, then we start to move away from the rest and the exercise that our body needs. And then it has a serious impact. So this is a clear pain point. Natural nutrient food consumes foods naturally containing nutrients linked to beauty benefits like peach gum, bird nest, or collagen, but it's inconvenient to prepare. So things that are high in nutrients, foods that are high in nutrients can be very inconvenient to prepare. If you think about creating a very healthy breakfast in the morning, right? And you want to have like an avocado sandwich, then you got to bake the bread, get the avocado, cut the avocado, slice it in, put it in, toast the bread, and then eat it, and then go. Or is it more convenient to walk into your McDonald's, grab a uh, grab a McMuffin, chop, chow that down, and you're on your way, right? So naturally nutritious, nutritious food is inconvenient to prepare, and that's a pain point. So another one is science-based beauty services achieve transformative effects like beauty salon treatments, skin laser, plastic surgery, trusted with high efficacy, but some concerns on safety, cost, and social taboo. So when you use some science-based beauty services, you can run into the problem, even though you know it works, but there's the idea of like, no, if I get cosmetic surgery, is it safe? I know it's definitely very high cost. And then there's that social taboo. Will people look down on me for getting plastic surgery? Will people look at me differently? Will people treat me differently because I got plastic surgery? And then lastly here is supplement. So medicine-like products with concentrated dose of functional nutrients, micro elements for targeted beauty benefit, like whitening pills, moisturization pills, there is definitely a concern on safety, dependency on it, and social taboo again. So for our case, for our pain points, we looked at, we saw that consumers had an information overload, difficult and time consuming to understand the benefits of the materials and the product. So when we ask consumers about their shopping experience, about buying a duvet, they 
shared that there was a information overload. They ended up doing research for our entire week, reading all the reviews that they can get their hands on, reading all the reviews that the influencers were putting out, reading all the contents the brand was talking about. But still, they had a very difficult time to understand what this all meant, what, which one was the most important to them, and which ones to trust at the end of the day. There was just a lot of information. And at some point, they realized they're just spending so much time. And all that time is a a pain point for them. They could potentially make that decision a lot faster. But because they don't understand the category very well, the product very well, they have to consume all this data, all this information. And this is a big pain point. Another pain point is the materials, low quality and unsustainable fabrics. So when they did the research, you can start to see that some duvets cost a lot less than uh, other duvets. And why is this the case? Uh, why is it that they're less ex like uh, less expensive? And it's because of lower quality and they're using unsustainable fabrics. So the consumers are looking for something of good value. They want better quality. They want more sustainable fabrics. But you know, is the price that they're going to pay going to be the right price? Or is are they going to be paying a price that's too high for higher quality, more sustainable fabrics? And then the last pain point is this cleanliness. There is allergies, mites. Cleanliness is more apparent now, right? So a big pain point is when um, consumers are looking for it, they have a fear that, the duvets is going to trap a lot of allergens, mites, bacteria. And because of the pandemic, people are very sensitive of cleanliness at the moment. They're very sensitive of germs, bacteria, virus. So everyone is always cleaning their hands. Uh, they're always using hand sanitizers, washing their hands. They're told to always wash their hands, all this stuff. So cleanliness, cleanliness, cleanliness it's reinforced over and over again. So a big pain point then is becomes, is this duvet very clean? Is this duvet uh, anti-mite? Does it promote, does it create allergies? Does it um, have high bacterial content? Is it easy to breed bacteria? And these are a pain point that's on their minds all the time, all right? So examples of the role in the category. So I'll take the example again. So the role is confidence. I feel more assured and exude positive energy, which helps me bond with others better and gives me motivations to take on challenges. Opportunities. Beauty opens doors in life, helping me build relationships, gain opportunities, and attain goals in life. So for us, the roles of the categories provide warmth and comfort that leads to high quality of sleep. The users can wake up, refresh, and energize. Right? The other one could be be clean to ensure that duvets are anti-mite and hypoallergenic. And then there's the rules of engagement. So for this beauty case, you follow along this four points and point one, point one of each uh, kind of connects. So the duvet, uh, the uh, beauty product, this beauty snack has Blueberries from region that contains 10 times more antioxidants. And then it's a strong antioxidant efficacy. It helps the skin be smooth and brighten. And it makes the consumer feel confident and good about myself. So it kind of has this, it does this, and it makes the consumer feel a certain way. Um, it's in a jelly format, so it's enjoyable to be eaten. And you can eat it as a snack. And it makes me feel like I'm trendy and playful. It has no sugar, no burden on my skin. It's healthy and no burden aligns with the anti-sugar um, trend. And it makes me feel sophisticated. I'm using something that is very new, cutting edge in terms of snap. Right. And, and then the last one is one jelly, one pack. It can be consumed anywhere and anytime. So it's helpful and it can be shared with others because we talked about a pain point earlier that 
having something that is nutritious is sometimes very difficult to do. It's time consuming. It's uh, not convenient. But now if this uh, really healthy product is made into a snack and you can take it anywhere, you can eat it anytime, you can share it with others even, right? And it has all those benefits um, that and all these solutions to the pain points that we identified earlier. Now, this product is blueberries from the very, uh, from the polar regions, has a lot of antioxidants, good for the skin. It's in a jelly format, has no sugar, no burden on the skin, and it's sold in uh, one jelly, one pack. This is very convenient to use. So essentially now we're solving all those pain points that we've identified earlier so that the consumer can reach this point where they feel confident and good about themselves. They are feeling trendy and playful. They're feeling sophisticated. They're feeling helpful. They can be shared with others. And so for us, the duvet has to be incredibly soft and fluffy to make me feel comfortable as though I'm sleeping in clouds, which makes me feel like I'm taking care of myself. So again, the duvet is, it has to be incredibly soft and fluffy, making me feel comfortable as though I'm sleeping in clouds, making me feel as though I'm taking care of myself. Because the, one of the pain points is there is so much information and then this person is worried about getting sick. They don't have time for themselves if they're spending all their time on others. So here is an opportunity for them to sleep in incredibly soft, fluffy, and it makes them feel very comfortable. And now they feel like they're taking care of themselves. And then the duvet has to be thoroughly clean so there are no mites to make me feel safe using it. So the product has to be shown that it's very, very clean. It's been washed, it's been uh, rinsed, and that there are no mites, no bacteria in it, and so that the consumer can feel safe using it. It fulfills all the different standards that are out there. It doesn't use harmful chemicals and, and all these things so that they, the consumer can feel safe using it. All right. So this uh, is the process that we go through to talk about who our consumers are. And then after you go through this, then you start to get a better understanding of who your consumers are what their needs are, what their pain points are, what the role of the category should be, what the rules of engagement should be. And if you take this and you compare it to a basic target audience, which just talks about this person being you know, between 25 and 35, making over $50,000 a year, living in somewhere in the world and has a certain job, right? that's kind of, that information is quite limited now. But if you look at, at a consumer persona and you look at the information that you have now, you can do a lot more for your product creation and your marketing communications. There's a lot more that you can do now uh, with all this information that, uh, that you've acquired. Okay, so looking at it to summarize again, you have all these aspiration goals, the fears, anxieties, the interests, the values, the core needs, the roles of the category, the pain points, the rules of engagement. All of this now is living in a consumer persona that you develop. And you can refer back to this consumer persona as you move forward. You can share this throughout the company. You can share this in different departments so that your project manager or product manager knows who they're creating products for. Your marketing team knows who they're communicating to, the problems that they have, the pain points that they have. And at the end of it, your product, your brand, your brand especially becomes a lot more consistent throughout because you're solving a very specific person's uh, problems. You're identifying their needs and you're addressing them, okay? So for the uh, persona, I want to talk a little bit about the experience journey too. Uh, the experience journey, when you go through the experience journey, it can really help you identify 
some of the um, parts of the consumer persona. So if you walk through a, a moment in the day, um, a consumer, uh, especially around the time that the consumer is using your product, then you can start to, uh, this can help you identify some of those anxieties, some of those pain points, some of the core needs, some of the roles of the category. So we put together a very quick uh, experience journey around the time a consumer goes to sleep. So in this case, that busy mom finishes all the chores, puts kids to sleep. Kids need to sleep early so they get enough sleep. The consumer mom is feeling stressed and exhausted. They're worried about the next day. What would they wish for for a better experience that they can put the kids to sleep faster and then they can get to time to relax and unwind a bit. And then the next day is kids are now in bed. The chores are done. She has her pre-sleep routine. And during this pre-sleep routine, she has some personal time to unwind, relax. And now she's a little bit more calm and relaxed than earlier. And she wants to be in the most comfortable place possible to enjoy that time. So when uh, we did some interviews, we talked to one mom uh, specifically, and she said, when, you know, at night, when my, fall, my, my son falls asleep, I've done my final chores, now it's 11 o'clock, and my day finally begins. I have 30 minutes of me time, and it's time for me to go to sleep. So the whole day was spent on others. The whole day was spent on making sure the kids are fed, go to school, making sure I do all my work, all this kind of stuff. And then when all the chores, the kids are asleep, finally she gets her time. Her day finally begins. So when her day finally begins, she should be able to really enjoy that time. So that time for her is in bed under a duvet, on her phone, reading a book, or whatever it is to uh, get her to get to sleep. And this time and the place that she in should be the most comfortable spot in the house for her. She really wants to maximize everything out of that 30 minutes before she goes to sleep. Okay. And then the next day she goes to sleep and gets rest for the next day. Sleep is important to stay healthy and stay on top of things. She's tired and ready to get some sleep. So here, what needs she needs is to have an ultra cozy duvet and bedding sleep set to sleep well. Right? She wants to have a bedding and a duvet that allows her to sleep well throughout the night. And this is again another important role of a duvet is to keep the person sleeping and keep them sleeping uninterrupted because. It regulates the temperature, it's not too hot, not too humid underneath the blanket or duvet, and so that the person has a very cozy duvet and it feels very comfortable and sleep uninterrupted throughout the night. So, and then the next morning, she's woken up by the alarm or the kids to get ready for another day, to get the kids ready for school. And then the Consumer Insights also allows you to create very good di digital interactions with the consumers through your marketing and your brand strategy. So by understanding the Consumer Insights, you know what the fears are, you know what the anxieties are. So when you create content, you really own in on these items and you really focus on it so that the content is incredibly relevant to the consumer now. You don't want to talk about um, just all random things you want to be very focused so that the consumer you're talking to feels really engaged and it's like hey you're talking to me and because you're talking to me i will follow you and i'm not going to unfollow you i'm going to actually share your content with others i'm going to um, talk about your content to others and that word of mouth that sharing can help you acquire more and more users but it starts with really relevant uh, content. It talks about very relevant uh, information that you want to share. So for, for, for myself, when obviously I'm not a busy working woman, um, and so how do I kind of work on content that would uh, be more appealing to working women? So you got to get here, you got to get resourceful. You got to start to talk to more people. 
you gotta talk to i talk to my wife i talk to my friends and i talk to a lot of my friends in the us because this is where i want to sell uh, our product and the consumers are there the working moms there may be a little bit different from the working moms uh, in china in asia in south america in europe right so you want to get the insights of the working moms in that market that you're selling to. So something I would definitely recommend is interviewing a lot of people in that target audience, that specific persona that you have in that audience, in that market that you're uh, wanting to sell to. And you'll identify a lot of different um, interesting insights that may be different from the market that you're in. Uh, even look at even does hiring people that live and work in those uh, in, in those markets that you're in. So our, for example, our influencers are based in the US, our copywriter is based in Canada, our social media person is going to be based in the US. And th this is, we're doing this very intentionally, so that we can get the right insights. So when the content is being created, the person who is creating it, actually living that life, it's actually very, very, Re, uh, very very relevant to them so that they know that it's uh, appropriate right and for myself i can make some assumptions about busy moms but i'm probably not the best person there's probably a, a lot of people like busy moms who can um, have a to validate the content we create a lot better than i can so it's very important that you have people in um, that you're validating your content with or that is creating your content for you. Okay, so a persona can inform marketing strategy. So it helps with brand and product positioning. Uh, it helps with communication ideas and content strategies, and it potentially can unlock new opportunities. When you enter the TA's world to identify engagement opportunities, occasions, touch points, um, maybe you can identify by creating this persona, you realize that there is a, a kind of a, a break. There's another persona in there, too, that has, they're very slightly, they're almost the same, but they're a little bit different. And they have a different set of needs. And they, these needs can be fulfilled with a different product. And so this can help you create potentially a new product or a new persona, because you identify that there's a group a different pers a persona that's slightly different from the one that you set out with okay so for us um uh rusty bay when we looked at busy moms and we looked at personalized comfort we uh identified like the persona as the busy moms and working and working uh women and we looked at our product where we wanted to create uh this personalized comfort where it comes together is um, this idea of self-care and because self-care is a opportunity for our duvets which are incredibly comfortable incredibly soft and when they match it up with the busy moms it overlaps in the sense that moms are looking for um, self-care looking for sleep better sleep indulgence some comfort right and so this self-care piece kind of uh, allows the two to merge and when we then we're able to talk more and more about self-care and this talks about our product but also resonates with our persona it also resonates with them and this could be a communication angle that we use now for our social media and our uh, external communications a persona can also guide product development all right. Um, when you identify the pain point solutions, you want to improve the product features to fulfill the specific TAs or the persona's needs. And the persona and the constant research that you're doing allows you to do iterative improvements or create new products, like I mentioned before. So new insights from feedback and data may lead to iterative improvements, existing consumers, or even development of new products or a new consumer persona. So when I say improve, product features or fulfill specific TA needs. When we are creating our product, we made sure that the shell, the outside part of our duvet was extremely soft. 
it's very, very soft to the touch. It feels really nice. And, you know, because we wanted to create a product that's for self care, that's very comfortable in, we made this a very important attribute that we must have for our duvet. We could use something that's maybe a little bit less, a little bit more, uh, less expensive to create, uh, to use a material that's like, uh, cotton or something that's a little bit harder, that's crispy, that's loud, something that you would traditionally find in a duvet. But we said no, because our TA wants very comfortable product. They want something very soft, something very cozy. We decided to use this material. So having this persona helped us decide our, how we build our product, how we create our product. And some of the features and the materials that we're going to use to make the product. And then this iterative improvements and new products. So we're already seeing that when we're talking to others, we're talking to influencers, we're talking to uh, potential consumers, we can already see some iterative improvements that we would have for our product in the future. We may want to go towards uh, new different fabrics, for example, maybe even higher uh, quality uh, down because that's even extra, extra, super fluffy. Or we may see that the consumers just want a nice value and they don't want the best down, but they want something that's fluffy enough, but not so expensive. So from the feedback that we get, we'll iterate our product and make it better and better so that we uh, are doing a better and better job at fulfilling the needs of our consumers. At the very beginning, when we have this consumer persona, we gotta remember that the consumer persona is your best guess at who your audience is. From the research that you've done, the data that you've collected is your best guess. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Over time, when you have your product out, when you're doing your communications, you're gonna get a lot of feedback coming in, and then you're gonna come back, and then you're gonna edit, and then you're gonna uh, fix or improve your consumer persona to get it to be closer and closer and closer to the actual real consumer in the market. At the very beginning, it's essentially a hypothesis that you're making, but over time, it's gonna get closer and closer to the real consumer that you're selling to. And that's the whole point, okay? So um, when we looked at us as from rest of the and marketing, and strategy. So let's say a consumer persona is very top level things, no time, no sleep, getting sick, high stress. So in our marketing brand strategy, we create a product quiz, where right? this quiz allows consumers to answer eight questions about the type of sleeper they are, the environment they sleep in, and the uh, budget that they have, and then we can recommend a duvet to them. This simplifies the process so that they don't have to go out and look for all this information online and just go to the quiz and get a recommendation for them. And this will save them a lot of time, which is a big pain point for them because they don't have the time to do all this research and they know that there's a lot of information, a lot of research that they do. And then uh, indulge in self-care. These are the communication parts that we wanna do is talk about how when you buy our duvet, you're not just buying uh, something you're asleep under, it's you're buying something to indulge in. You're buying something that allows you to have self-care um, during the time that you're using it. And then in our product development uh, part, we have to make sure that it's extra ultra soft, really fluffy, and it's very premium because the consumer wants to indulge in this, they want to have self-care. So it has to be premium. But at the same time, it's a good value at the same time. So it's that combination of being premium, but at a very reasonable price. Okay. So this is the, it's a consumer centric feature. Um, this is a good example from our, our website and how our product looks like. So when the product is delivered to the consumer, it comes in this uh, reusable hamper and the duvets look very beautiful. Uh, they're very clean, they're very luxurious looking and ultra soft when you uh, take it out and you use it. And we want to move towards a brand that is very sustainable as well. So like our corn product, for example, 
is made from uh, agro waste. So it's like the byproduct of uh, corn fields. Like when the corns have been plucked from the corn fields, you're left with a corn field. And um, usually what farmers do is they may burn it down or they have to pay to get rid of it. So uh, there's technologies that's coming around where you can use these this material, this waste at the end, and then turn it into uh, corn starch, which then can be turned into a corn fiber. And this corn fiber is used in our duvets as the filling. So we also have a uh, environmental uh, sustainability side to our business. We don't make it our top priority because our top priority is delivering comfort and quality sleep. But uh, one of our unique selling positions or reasons to believe is that we are moving towards a very sustainable products. And so that's also the reason that uh, made us choose this hamper is that even though um, the packaging can also be reused uh, for other purposes and it doesn't have to be a waste. And we even put our products into a bag that is made out of corn. And the, the bag is a biodegradable bag. We don't use plastic. We use this biodegradable bag that we wrap our product into and ship it to our consumers. So yeah, this is our, one of our brand positioning is that we want to be a, a brand that um, you know says you deserve a rest, but also the earth deserves a rest. And that's um, our, one of our values that we have. So how to do a good persona? So who are they? You have to really identify the demographics, age, gender, location, what sort of financial situation would they need to be in to afford your services or product? Are they affluent or mass market, working or not working, single income, household or dual, big family or no children, living in the city or in the country? Sometimes uh, when you're, you're doing this, you got to make some assumptions right, of who your consumer is. Like, so, for example, um, if your product is being sold for like a thousand dollars, obviously your demographic, um, like a thousand dollar duvet, for example, then your demographic has to be making, um, a, a certain level of income. They cannot be not making a lot of money and afford a thousand dollar duvet. So you gotta have some, take a step back and put some logic into it and see this, this, the person, this, persona that you're creating, does it match the product that you are wanting to sell? And something like just at the very beginning, like a, a duvet that costs a thousand dollars, then they must be uh, making a certain amount of money. That means they have a certain type of career, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, social economics, income, working status, education, what motivates them to buy your product? What's happening in their life? When do they purchase it? Uh, specific time, occasion, what's the end result they get from using your product or service? And then adding depth and color, who are your ideal customer? Be as specific as possible. What does their average day look like? Do they go to work? What sort of work? Do they uh, go to the gym? Uh, what are their passions? What brings them joy? What can uh, they do while they're away hours? Uh, what's important to them? What motivates them? What gets them out of bed is still into five values. The values are core beliefs and guide attitudes and actions. They help us determine what is important to us. And bringing able to define your customer's values is connecting to them. So based on the above questions, how we simply describe your ideal customer includes the target customer, but also what problem you're solving. Okay, so that is uh, looking at the consumer persona and now it's your uh, challenge your task to go out and create your own consumer persona again it's a hypothesis of your ideal customer it doesn't have to be perfect right away but definitely you got to put in the research and the effort to start to understand all these needs so go out do your interviews do your surveys to validate do the market research, 30 party research, find all this information that can help you create the best possible hypothesis at the very beginning. And then as you move along, reiterate and change 
and make it better over time. Okay, so that's it. Um, you can take some questions now and let me know and we can kind of uh, address some of those questions.